was in Europe again last spring, and um, and uh, you know, I always get the impression that when I'm there, there's more things happening in the world. And then I stop for a moment and realize actually it's just that the media reports it and people talk about it more often. You know, and uh, one one case in point was uh, events off the coast of Gaza, Israel, uh, last April, and uh, the media not only not only tells people that this is happening, but when when public it's public interest organizations, citizens groups organize public protests in public places. The public media tells people about it before it happens, which is you know, <laughs> quite a concept. You know, I guess they, they call them advocacy journalists here, but there they don't call them that. They just call them journalists. And, and um, so then the, the protests are, are, are correspondingly well attended. Um, it's easy that way. If they stop doing it, then they'll, then they'll be all complaining about how lethargic the population is. You know? What happened? Some few people might remember. Maybe the media we used to help. Well, yeah, maybe. In 48, they were driven out at the point of a machine gun. Families fled in fear to Jordan, Syria, and Lebanon. They fled around the globe, firmly held in terror grip. And about a million refugees ended up in the Gaza Strip. In 1967, the IDF moved in, and the refugees in Gaza became refugees again. The settlers took their farmland, the soldiers took the ports, and the people were surrounded by military forts in 2007. They cut them off completely. No access to the borders, no access to the sea. The world began to see this unavoidable stem. The most crowded place on earth was now a concentration camp. Israeli jet fighters bombed Gaza from the air and they kept out the supplies needed to rebuild and repair. They kept out the convoys of humanitarian aid, anemic children going hungry, crushed and burned in bombing bays from around the world. Good people try to get across the border to the other side. Almost all of them were turned away, deported back to Turkey, Jordan, France, the USA. They were barred from ever coming back. Adam and Huwait had decided on a different tack. They loaded up a boat, managed to get through. That's when activists in Istanbul decided what to do, armed with food and wheelchairs and prosthetic limbs for victims of the bombing raids to wear. They packed cement by the ton. They had a few kitchen knives, but not a single gun. They were determined to reach the bay, to break the siege of Gaza, and not be turned away. As they left Turkish waters, everybody wished them well. As for what would happen next, only the apartheid state could tell. All aboard the Mavi Marmara, sailing toward Goliath's kingdom, armed with nothing but a stone. All aboard the Mavi Marmara, tell the children of Jerusalem, you are not alone. 700 people on board this Turkish ferry. They were 60 miles from the shore, out in the open sea, in international waters, with no plans for turning back. That's when Netanyahu told his soldiers to attack. They came down from helicopters, fired guns from Zodiacs. They shot some people in their heads and shot others in their backs. The captain raised a white flag high into the air, but the soldiers kept on shooting beneath the floodlights glare. The soldiers kept on shooting. It was a free fire zone. So many dead and wounded, just how many isn't known. So many dead and wounded, blood flowing on the floor. The soldiers kept on shooting 60 miles from the shore. Medics tried to treat the wounded, all they could do was watch them bleed. The soldiers wouldn't let them get the urgent help they needed. Mass troopers held their hostages, the Navy towed the ship, just for trying to sail to the Gaza Strip. All aboard the Navi Marmara, sailing toward Goliath's kingdom, armed with nothing but a stone. All aboard the Navi Marmara, Tell the children of Jerusalem, you are not alone.
throw a stone. The ghost of the Exodus is shouting at the sky, but Netanyahu isn't listening, he's just watching people die. For days nobody knew just what happened on that boat, because everyone was held in jail and dead men do not float. All the world will remember what happened on that night, and to end the siege of Gaza, war will go and join the fight. All aboard the Rachel Corey, sailing toward Goliath's kingdom, armed with nothing but a stone. All aboard the Rachel Corey, tell the children of Jerusalem, you are not alone. All aboard the Mavi Marmara, sailing toward Goliath's kingdom, armed with nothing but a stone. All aboard the Mavi Marmara, tell the children of Jerusalem, you are not alone.